about to lose my mind. I am, I am losing my mind. <laughs> How are you friends? Welcome back to Biblio Chic if you're new here. My name is Serena and I like to make things. I have had this project in my head for probably since 1997 and that is a spin on Harry Potter's Professor McGonagall's tartan hat. Y'all, I want to be a witch. I just want to be a tartan loving witch and I guess I kind of am because I love Outlander. So I'm going to try to merge my love of Harry Potter and tartan and Outlander and mush them together and become Sassanac Witch. I am going to become the Sassanac Witch. Yeah. So if you follow some of my Outlander sewing videos and you know that I have some lovely, lovely Outlander Replica tartan that I got from Outlander Replica Facebook group and I have some left and I want to make a Sassanac Witch hat. I have enough of the, what is this called? What is this tartan called? Rent? The Rent Tart? I think that's what they're calling it. I'm about to lose my mind. I am, I am losing my mind. Anyways, last year I made two skirts that Claire wears in season one and Brianna actually wears this tartan in season four and I had enough of this tartan fabric to make Brianna's jacket that she wears where she takes like that middle section of what Claire wears in Lollybrock and the rent episodes and reuses that but have a, a black kind of shell. I really wanted to make that jacket before I made this hat because I wanted to make sure I had enough for that jacket. But you, you know what? It's like the middle of spooky season and I want a hat. I want it now. So I don't think I need that much. The only thing that is kind of like, hmm, do I have enough fabric is that middle section of Brianna's bodice is cut on the bias. So if y'all ever try to cut anything on the bias or use bias for anything, y'all know that bias uses up a lot of fabric. But lucky for me, I think I only need like this much by this much. So I'm going to measure what I think I'll need for that jacket, cut that out, set it aside, and then I will have the rest of the the tartan fabric for my Sassanac witch hat. So that is the plan. I did refer to a couple smarter people on the interwebs than I that have done this project before, albeit not an Outlander Sassanac witch, but they have, you know, made their own Professor McGonagall's tartan. Um, I haven't watched this video in a while, but I think I'm gonna go back and watch Bernadette Banner's video on it. And I have a blog by Fresh Flippery Dot com, but they pretty much did a step-by-step -step tutorial that I will kind of follow. The only thing I probably will not follow to the T is that they give um, like measurements and I have, I know it doesn't look it, but I have a pretty big head and I have a lot of hair. I'm going to make sure that I take a head circumference and make sure all of that fits. So y'all know the fabric that I'm going to use, some other things that I have for this project. I have some army green twill tape that I got from Amazon that I will use for the, the little strings. For my lining, it was suggested to use thin polyester lining fabric, but I don't have that. Uh, but what I do have <laughs> is the opposite of thin polyester lining fabric. I have thick wool fabric that I'm going to be using. Hopefully this is not too thick. I also got some interfacing. I had this in my stash. So I want a like a really stiff interfacing for the pointy part of the hat. So I have that and then I have kind of floppy interfacing for the brim of the hat. What else do I need? A needle and thread, of course, a sewing machine. One thing I do need that I don't have that I'll probably go shopping for is I need some hair combs to affix the hat onto my head so when I'm walking around all cool in my sass neck witch hat, it doesn't blow over by the wind. Okay, so that is it. I'm going to kind of describe my thought process with how I'm going to do this after reading that Fresh Flipperies blog. Basically, their shapes of the pattern is the brim of the hat is a butternut squash. 
shape with a hole cut out. It's butternut squash shape on the edges so you have somewhere to have those flaps down. That is why it's kind of dipped in butternut squash shape. The hat is a, obviously it's a triangle, it's conical, and then the way that they have it, I don't know. That's that's the other thing that I'm not quite sure, like how tall I want it and how it's angled. I don't want it to be like straight up and down like a traditional Halloween-y witchy hat. I want it like Professor McGonagall's where hers kind of like goes that way. So, uh, is that an obtuse? Triangle? I did, I did not do very well in geometry, but it, the triangle situation, I'm going to have to play around with that. So I am definitely going to do, if not a mock-up, I'm going to take my Christmas paper and figure out a pattern and just tape it all together and see if I like the angles of all of that. So I'm going to stop talking and get to work. All right, here's the, does it work or not work? I got to squat. <laughs> I'm going to walk you through my patterning process for the Cessnock witch hat so you might be able to come to your own witch hat faster than I. Let's talk about customizing the pattern pieces to fit your measurement. This witch hat is made up of three pieces, the brim, ear flap, and cone. For the cone, you'll need to know your head circumference and the height you would like your witch hat to be. For me, my head circumference is 23 inches and I want my hat to be 11 and a quarter inches. To make patterning easier, I'm going to draw this in half to make each side of the cone uniform. Since I'm patterning this in half, I will need to half my head circumference, which for me comes out to be 11 and a half inches. I now know three points of my triangle. The vertical line will measure 11 and a quarter inches. From the bottom of that vertical line, keeping the distance from the top point 11 and a quarter inches, I'm going to draw a curved line until it reaches half of my head circumference of 11 and a half inches. Now I can finish drawing the side lines of the cone, connecting the top point to the bottom right point. If I unfold my piece, I should have a perfect cone to fit my head circumference of 23 inches. After adding my seam allowance, I can cut one piece of my tartan fabric lining and stiff interfacing. Next is to pattern the brim, which is a little more complicated. First, I decided after some playing around that I don't want my brim to be butternut squash shape, but instead a simple oval with a circle for my head cut out, since I wanted to have room on the sides to be able to tie up my ear flaps without having too much fabric bunching up, I decided to make the side shorter than my front and back brim, and is the reason why I'm going with an oval shape instead of a traditional circle shape for the brim. I've decided to make the sides of my brim to measure two and a half inches and three and a quarter inches for the front and back of the brim. Now we need to know some numbers in order to cut the inside circle for our head. We'll start with the known head circumference and then find the diameter and radius from that number. Here are all the formulas for finding diameter and radius from the circumference using pi, but I use the helpful Omni calculator to calculate all my numbers for me. I'll link the Omni calculator down below if you want to use that. We now know all of the important numbers to draw our circle cut out for our head. But again, to make things easier, I'm going to cut this circle not in half, but fourths, and focus on that radius number to help us out. Just like when we drew the cone using triangle of points, we will do the same thing using our radius number. My head's radius is 3.66 inches, so again, making those three points, I drew a swinging line, making sure to keep that distance of 3.66 inches to connect my top left dot to my bottom right dot. I now control on the rest of the brim using my calculated radius and my brim width. The top of my triangle will be my radius plus my side width 2.5 plus 3.66 equaling 6.16 inches. The back will be my radius plus my back width 3.25 plus 3.66 equaling 6.91 inches. I will now connect my upper left dot with my lower right dot with as even as a curve as I can get. If I cut and unfold my pattern piece, it should be an oval with a circle cut out of it, custom to fit my head circumference. You can now cut one of your fabric, lining, and light interfacing. Don't forget to add your seam allowance. The ear flap was the easiest to pattern. You're gonna start by folding your paper in half and cut a rectangle measuring 2.25 inches by five 0.75 inches. 
lines. Mark a dot two inches from the bottom right. Draw a curve and cut from the bottom to that dot. Your ear flat pattern piece should look something like this. Cut two of the fabric in the lining. You should be good to go without adding seam allowance as long as it's around a quarter of an inch. If you want more of a seam allowance, you want to make sure to mark it on your pattern piece. Finish up by cutting two lengths of your ribbon. I made each of mine 36 inches each to make a cute bow with long tails when tied up. You should now have all of your pieces cut out specifically to your own head measurements. You can adjust them to your liking. I would recommend testing your ear flap piece to make sure it covers your ears when sewed up into the hat. Hello, tis the next day. I was able to finish up my pattern yesterday and cut out all of the pieces. I've decided that I'm gonna toss out that lining of the black wool because I think it's gonna be too thick considering I'm using really thick interfacing for the brim of the hat. So I dug through my Goodwill stash, basically my clothes that I Goodwill, and I'm like, oh, this would be perfect for something, and then I forget all about it. So I found a leather suede green skirt that goes perfect with the aesthetics of my Sassanac Witch hat. So I'm gonna use the suede part for the inside lining of the ear flaps, and then I'm going to use the lining of that skirt. Luckily, that skirt is actually lined. It's like a nylon rayon mix. I'm just going to cut out lining from that. I'm going to line just the cone part with that nylon. So everything is cut out and I'm ready to start rocking and rolling and sewing. So hopefully, fingers crossed, everything is going to go well. Oh, I to help me like stay focused and not forget all the steps, that I am going to do today is I wrote down all my steps on my handy dandy things to do before going through the stones notepad which if you want one for yourself I'll link it down below it is from my shop Biblio Chic Shop just so you guys know you guys will be buying this for me and I will personally package this up and send it to y'all you can also find pins and keychains in my shop link down below so uh, I have nine steps but then you have like sub steps and all the nines all written down and while I do all the steps I'm gonna cross it off I will if you are making this hat for yourself I'll link the steps on my blog in a like PDF file that you can download and print out if you want to follow these steps as well Iron under my seam allowance for my lining was very, very helpful for when inserting it into my finish hat. I recommend doing this 110% of the time every time you do a lining piece. Pressing the seam open with the thick interfacing and the thick wool was really, really hard. Mm, not pointy. I'm so glad I have that <laughs> chunky knitting needle laying around to help me get that point. Given a little over the garden wall vibes, but I love it. You'll want to make a sandwich of your ear flaps of right sides of your fabric touching with the ribbon in between. In my case, it was tartan ribbon lining. Since my fabric was thick, I decided on sewing a quarter inch seam allowance on these thick boys. Give them a nice trim and press. I like to top stitch the edges to give them a more finished look and to keep that lining from rolling. Like with the ear flaps, you're going to make a sandwich of the brim pieces with the right sides touching. My layers were interfacing tartan tartan. I decided the underbrim should be my tartan fabric instead of my polyester lining. Here I'm just making sure I have the quarters of the brim so I can match it with the cone to make sure the front and the backs match up and the sides match up perfectly. hard to machine stitch so I think the rest of it since she is thick I'm, I'm gonna have to hand sew it. I trimmed the excess bulk from the inside of the hat left the brim like out the outermost layer intact so I can I'm gonna hand tack that in but before I sit down since I'm gonna probably have to do a lot of hand sewing I'm gonna try this on I have my hair the way I think I'm going to do it. So I'm probably going to do it like in a low bun with this hat. The brim, actually with all the sewing and everything, it, it sat up a lot higher than I thought. I thought it was going to be at least down here, but I think it's still going to be. It's, it's sitting on my crown pretty well. I have my, my little ear flap. I am going to figure out where they're going to be on here. And I'm going to tack that in to put these in place. And then I'm going to hand stitch the 
lining in and then all I had to do is figure out what to do with a ribby, ribbian, ribbian, ribbon do around the brim and then I will be a snack witch. I'm gonna try to do this without it falling but I think that looks pretty good. Everything's covered. Let's see. Uh, I'm gonna stab. I'm gonna end up stabbing my head aren't I? No I didn't stab my head. Out, you know, there it is. <laughs> There's the pin. At least it went through. All right, let's try the other side. Not stir up my head this time. There. All right, even all that up. All right, so I'm about to quit for the day because it's almost dinner time and it's Friday night, so I have to go be with the family. But. I wanted to make sure I get this because I'm probably going to sit down on the couch tonight and hand stitch the rest of us. But I'm tacked on, well, I whip stitch. I whip stitched the ear flaps on and I put it on my head to where I think it. I'm also going to take my twill ribbon and I'm going to, I was going to stitch this down, but I'm going to cheat. I'm going to get my hot glue gun stick out. And basically, I want to fold it like a bias tape but I'm gonna fold each of the ends of this twill tape inward and I'm going to glue it all down so that when I place it on my hat it is a small enough width to go around the circumference of the hat without it like poking out because if I left the original width of the twill tape it's, it's just it's too thick to go around the conical shape of the hat down and do all that hand stitching and some finishing touches and I'll Check in, maybe before the reveal. We shall see. hands down my most favorite make on this channel yet I don't know why just the the nod to Outlander and this tartan and it's a witch hat I mean what is there not to like about a deer stalker witch hat you know a nod to both the one of my most favorite book series a book series from my childhood Harry Potter and then a, a book series Outlander from my adulthood uh, all, all in one. So let's talk about the things that I liked. I like obviously the fabric. I like the, I'm glad I didn't line it with the wool and I chose the suede from that upcycled skirt. And I like the, the little band with this like this little cute little bow. I think I underestimated the amount of seam allowance I needed only because of the thickness of the materials used. There's a good probably I want to say a good centimeter or so of thickness right here in the band area that's taking up some of that circumference of that hat. If I were to go back and remake my Sassanac Witch hat, I would put in more seam allowance, especially in the circ this, this circumference area. I might want to also try play around with the brim style. I'm kind of wondering how it would look like with, you know, the traditional round hat. 
I do kind of like the floppiness of the brim. It kind of gives, is it backwards? It is backwards. <laughs> I do like the floppiness of the brim. I think it kind of gives it more character and akin to what McGonagall wears in the series. And I love how it kind of looks, uh, looks tied up. I do kind of think that it and looks a little bit like a cowboy hat so I would definitely go back and try to mess around with that brim but other than that I really really love this hat I can't wait to not only wear it for Halloween but I'm gonna wear it all winter long you know it's bl very blustery in the Midwest here so I'm gonna be rocking my Sassanac witch all all season long well I think that's it for now I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you do make your own Sassanac witch or tartan deer stalker professor McGonagall hat let me know I, I want to see too if you have pictures of it let me know and I will see you next time bye